Hi everyone, let's go ahead and get started with the Streamlit interactive widget example. So we need to again our, uh, we need to do our previous exercise again. So I'm going to press Ctrl and J and thereafter I'm going to stop this file. I mean stop this uh, Streamlit application. Thereafter I need to file here, I need to run here the third file. So you see this is the third one. 03 working with interactive widgets there so I press here the tab it is going to auto complete so it is now going to run this file so in this file nothing is you know I mean nothing is written here other than just a title so only the title is shown here now here we have our sample file so this is our reference uh, application which we are going to make in this video that you can see on my GitHub uh, Streamlit tutorial repo as well. So here is the third, you know, the third section which we are going to make working with interactive widgets. We have ST buttons, Streamlit checkboxes, radio boxes, select boxes, multi-select slider and select slider. So all these things we are going to use here. So as you see there, click me, check boxes, radio buttons, thereafter these select, thereafter these multi-selects and then these sliders etc we are going to see how you can use these in your application let's go ahead and get started with the button first of all so this is the button we are going to start with the button and here is our current application which is running there at 8502 port and this one is our reference application okay so i'm going to start with the button so i write here button is equal to st dot button and then I write here click me so what happens here as soon as you make some change in your file it is going to ask you whether you want to reload your application or not I say yes always rerun so whenever I make any change you just rerun this file here so you see there click me is coming there but after clicking nothing is coming there so to do that you need to write here if button that's mean if button is clicked you will be this will be non zero value then if button then you can write there st dot write then you can say that you clicked me it's simple you just click on here it says that you clicked me this is so simple perfect now you come here let's go ahead and implement the radio button so how you can implement radio button you see these radio buttons when you have multiple options and you want to select any of these options then you can use the radio button but in reference I shown that we need to do for the checkbox as well so let's go ahead and quickly implement this checkbox and then do the radio button so I say that here checkbox is equal to st dot checkbox and then the text data age here check me to enable something I'm just going to make some difference in the text data so I'm just gonna do it something like that so you see there this check me to enable something so this text data is written here once checkbox has happened here you can check the state of the checkbox so if checkbox is selected then you can say that st dot write checkbox is clicked and then you can say that something has happened okay so as soon as I click this I say I, I get here checkbox is clicked something has happened here okay perfect let's go ahead and implement our radio button so as I told you that whenever you have a multiple options and you need to select only one option then you can use the radio button so I say that here radio is equal to st dot radio and then you say that choose an option so you see how this works so whenever you call a method from the streamlet so first first string value whatever the first string value you give to a streamlet uh, function it is used as label thereafter options are used here so what options I'm 
giving users to select. So I give options to NLP, I give options to DL, I also give option to computer visions, I also give option to ML here. Let's say I give option to my users that choose one option on which you want a tutorial. So user can select any of these options. Alright, so whatever the option is selected, that option is returned in this radio variable. You can use that st.write, you can say that you have selected and then you can use this radio. So whatever the value you select that now you will be able to see that those values are reflected here. So I selected these value, any of these value these are reflected. But when you have let's say a large set of value, let's say you have uh, like uh, if I multiply it two times, so you see there, you know large list there, very long list then showing this as radio button is going to consume a lot of space so it is not feasible to do that so to avoid that problem we can use the select box so i write here select box is equal to st dot select box and in this select box i can just simply pass the same variable what i had passed there so the same thing I can pass now it will be used as select box. Now a list, a, a drop down list will be shown there. So user can select from this drop down list. If you multiply it by 20, that's mean 20 into 4, 80 variables. So there are total 80 variables inside this. But now it's user can scroll and select any of these here. Alright, so that's the beauty of this select box. This doesn't take much space. If you have a large list, then you can use this select box. You can simply use this st.write again to display that. You have uh, selected select box. So it's like that. So whatever the selection you make, you would be able to see that those selections are displayed here. That's the difference between radio and select box. Let's say if you want to give a user to select multiple options. Let's say my user says that I want tutorial on NLP as well as computer vision. Then how I can get that feedback? So to get that feedback you can use the multi-select. So multi-select option is also very simple. You can write here st dot multi-select and then you can say that here choose multiple items and thereafter I write here you know all these options which I had written here oops I'm just gonna put those options here so now user would be able to select multiple options. Now you see the DL is selected, NLP is also selected, ML is CV, everything is selected. So once everything is selected, you won't be able to see anything here. So that is how you can see that the multi-selection happens. You can simply print it using st.write your selection is multi-select. This will be displayed in the form of list. Now you can see it here. So, Alright, so this is the value. This, this is something where you have already given option to select. Now let's say if you want to give some slider. Let's say you want a rating and you want to give option 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and you want to read it from the user. Then how would you do that? So that you can do from the slider. So I'm going to read it into a rating variable you can write here st dot slider and then as usual the first first variable is label for this so I say that select your rating and in this minimum value I'm going to define here 0 so rating rating starts actually from 1 and thereafter the max value I'm going to give a user to 5 here and thereafter a step equal to 1 that means a user can change the rating either 1 
or user can change it to or user can make it three four or five but if you make this step size to 0 0.5 user can also give rating like uh, okay so seems like this should start with 1.0 and then this should start with 5.0 so it start with 1.0, 1 1.5, 1 2, 2.5. It's like that. You can do it here. All right. Perfect. So that's how you can use the uh, slider for your rating. And then you can write here st dot write your rating is whatever rating is selected that will be displayed here. 3.5 is displayed there. Let's go ahead and see if you want to give user to select only predefined value, but those defined values are given by you, then how user can do that? So for that purpose, you can give a user a select slider in that case. So I'm going to say that here, select slider is equal to st dot select slider. I write here select a uh, value. Moreover, this is kind of same thing what is shown here, but the difference is here. It takes input. Uh, it, it takes these values as the input. Earlier, it was taking these values as a range, but now it is taking it as the input. Now you can ask your user to select these by sliding this. All right. This is not a feasible option. This doesn't seem good, but I'm just telling you there is an option. Uh, for your user to select these things, but you can also give here uh, other values as well. Let's say 0, 1 and uh, some something else, whatever you decide, you can give those things there. So whatever value you put in that list, those will be displayed there. You can simply use here st.write and then select slider, then these value will be displayed here. Whatever the value you select, those will be displayed here. All right, perfect. So you have seen how you can make a, how you can make make a use of these interactive widgets from the streamlit. This is all about in this lesson. Thanks a lot for watching this. I'll see you in next one.